Okay, let's proceed by learning flow control, also known as decision making in Python. This is a common topic across every single programming language. The underlying uh, driver behind flow control is that when we collect inputs, like you learned in the last chapter, sometimes we need to dynamically change the path that the program follows or the, or the processing that happens depending on what the values of the inputs are. So for example, a customer comes in and to purchase some products, uh, the first thing you need to know is, do they have a membership account or not? If they're a member, they get a discount. And if they're not a member, uh, they don't or something like that. You don't know before the customer shows up if they're going to be a member or not. So the program needs to be able to dynamically adapt to that. So in order to make that work, we need comparison operators. So here's a table showing all the possibilities and what they mean. Each comparison operator returns a true false value. So here's how we test if something is equal, not equal, less than, less or equal to, and you get it. So double equals is different from what you've learned before in the past. You learned one equal sign, and we use that to set a variable equal to something. We call that an assignment statement. We'd say x equals 1, and that would change the value of x to 1. Now, with a comparison operator, we don't want to change any values or set a variable equal to something. We want to check and see if a variable is uh, compared to another value or variable in a certain way or not. So for example, does x equal 1? We check that by having a double equal sign and it'll return a true or false. If it's equal to 1, it'll return true and if not, it'll return false. This means not equals. So does x not equal 1? So if x is equal to 1, then it returns false instead of true and then uh, so forth with each of these. So let's start with some basics here. Let's learn our first uh, if statement by going to Google Collab all right, I'm going to open up a new one here, and let's make a new code place. Okay, so let's start really simple. Let's create a variable x equal to 1. Let's uh, now test and see using an if statement. If x, remember it's double equals. You don't have to use spaces. I kind of like to use spaces. If x double equals 1, colon, that's where we indicate, okay, this comparison operator is done. And then down here, we do whatever it is we want to do if x does equal 1. Yes, x equals 1. All right, run that program. So first line gets processed. We set x equal to 1 with a single equal sign. Then down here is our if statement. And now an if always has the same common features. It starts with the word if, ends, then it has the comparison operator next. So we're checking to see if some value is equal to, not equal to, greater than, greater than, equal to, less than, less than, or equal to, some other value. And here I've used a integer literal. I've hard-coded a number in, but I could say, does x equal y? And then I could have up here uh, y equals 1, and I could say, if x equals y, then I could say, yes, x equals y. Just doing this so you can see that I can use uh, variables on uh, both sides of the comparison operator. The left side does always need to be a variable, though, but the right side can be either a variable or a, a literal, string literal, integer literal, uh, anything like that. So, whoops, let's leave this example the way it was for now. Let's go on and do something else. Next, let's get an input from the user and make this actually dynamic the way it was intended to be. So this time let's set x equal to, and let's use the input command, which we learned in the prior chapter. And let's say something like pick a number and Let's convert whatever they give us to an integer. Make sure it remains an integer. Otherwise, it's going to be expecting, it'll turn whatever number we write in there into a string. And so in our operator, we'd have to say, does x equal double quote one if we didn't use this int command right here. So whenever we are dealing with integers, we want to make sure it stays as an integer to keep our program smaller and quicker. So that's why I'm using that int command to wrap it around whatever comes back from that input box. Okay, so x equals pick a number. Now let's say if x equals zero, oops, not semicolon, colon, to end that. Um, notice, oh, also, notice when I hit the enter, uh, it tabs in two spaces, whatever I'm about to do next. If I'm not tabbed in two spaces, it's going to assume that whatever it is that I'm about to do is not part of the if statement. So whatever gets printed, whatever happens as a result of this being true has to be tabbed in. And if it's not tabbed in, it's going to ignore it. 
All right, so let me show you what I mean here. Uh, let's print once again. Make sure just copy this line. Yes, x equals one. And then if it's not, what is it gonna do next? All right, that's where we use an else command. So now I'm gonna delete back and type in the keyword else. And there's no, with an else, there's no other criteria. So if x is evaluated as true, it will do this. If x is evaluated as false, it'll do whatever's down here regardless of what x equals. That's what else means. After that, it just means whenever this operator is uh, compared, regardless of what value x is, if this isn't true, it's always going to do whatever comes next here. So I'm just going to say print no x does not equal 1. All right, let's run this. Oh, and I've got a, um, oh, what did I miss here? Uh, oh, right here, else. Just like I have a colon up here, I need a colon down here after else. So after each um, piece of the if statement, including the else, I've got to have this semi, sorry, colon to, uh, to be valid. Okay, pick a number. So let's pick one. So it prints out, oh, oh, zero. <laughs> sorry. That's what we call a, uh, the, the previous error was a, um, a typo error or a syntax error. I mean, this was a logical error. The program ran, but it didn't do what I intended it to do because although I had valid code, my logic in the code was not, was not correct. I meant to do one, not zero. All right, pick a number. Let's put in one. There you go. Yes, x equals one. And it ignores anything that's right here. However, notice, as long as I delete back two spaces, it will continue on with the program and do whatever else I have it designed to do. All done. All done. I like to kind of put some spaces in between these things. There we go. All right, so let's run this again. Pick a number. Let's put in one. All right, notice it prints out yes. It ignores this because the this comparison operator was evaluated as true, so it only processes what's in this path, ignores what's in this path. Then, of course, if we run it again, whoops, try that one more time, shift enter, let's put in two. Now it says no, x does not equal one, all done. Cool, all right, let's keep going. Next, uh, I wanna show you the elif command. So I'm going to copy this down. And instead of else, or in addition to else, I'm gonna add uh, something else. Let's check and see if it's greater than five or not. So to do that, we're gonna have the elif command, l if x greater than, or let's do greater than or equal to five, colon, print um, x is greater than or equal to five, and here we'll say, um, we can have nothing. We can have no else statement if we want to. We could get rid of this entirely. And then if it's it's either equal to one or greater than five or nothing is done at all. Or we could leave it here. Um, uh, what do we want to say this? X equals one, greater than five. Um, X didn't meet either criteria. There we go. Pick a number, we'll say three. X didn't meet either criteria. So it checked this operator first. Nope, it's not equal to one. It checks this operator second. It's not greater than or equal to five. So it then here, anything else gets processed right here and then all done. Okay, so that's very simply put, a single level if statement else, if l if else. All right, let's keep going. So uh, we can also do this with strings, and I just want to make sure you see an example of how to do that with a string instead. Let's make a variable called name. Let's cast this to a string. Ugh, not that it's absolutely necessary because it's going to already assume that it's a string, but not a bad habit just to get into. Um, let's say what's your name, and then let's come down here and say uh, if name equals mark my name and then let's have another criteria else whoops not equals else um, and let's put in some uh, values now so let's say print 
you are probably the instructor. Otherwise, print, you are probably cool. Okay. Run. What's your name? Mark. There we go. Pretty straightforward. I just wanted you to see that you could use this with a string as well now. Something else here, probably cool. All right. With string, though, notice that we have some limitations. Um, back here in my educator, uh, not all of these operators will work with string. Only the first two will. It either equals something or doesn't equal something. Uh, you obviously can't use greater than or the less than with the um, with string. But if we come back here, we could say if name is not equal to mark. That way, now it just reverses the results. If I put in mark, it says, okay, if name not equal to mark. All right. I typed in mark, so that was evaluated as false, which means it skipped this one and went down to this one. So as you can see, likely, there's often a lot of ways to do any uh, flow control or decision tree or decision structure. Um, I, can, I, I can use not, I can use equals, I can reverse the outputs, um, and that's only going to expand. The possibilities are only going to get uh, larger and larger. But let's stop on this video for now and proceed to the next chapter.